everyone, Sean Frangella here with a quick video about my top five customization tips for working in After Effects. So After Effects has a pretty cool interface, but you can push it even further and customize a couple things to make your workflow a lot easier, quicker, and brighter. So let's get started and talk about how this will make working in After Effects better for you. Number one, new layers at current time. So by default, this is how After Effects works. Say you're doing stuff and you're ahead in the timeline and you need to make a new layer like text, let's say, and we wanted to start here, but it automatically starts at the beginning of the layer. So then we need to shift that over and then do our work. And same thing if we made anything else, we made a new adjustment layer that we only need here. I go through this process or used to all the time of just chopping things down. Well, if we go to preferences and After Effects preferences general, this is handled by this checkbox that create layers at composition start time. So this is one thing I love to have checked off. And now if we're ahead of time and make something like text, it'll start it right where our playhead is. Same thing if we make an adjustment layer or a camera or anything like that, it saves the process of having to chop things down and I'll put your new assets right where you're working. Number two, brighter layer colors. So one of the best things you can do for organization in After Effects is use our layer colors, which we have over here, to mark layers of different types with different colors so you can keep track of things over time and create a system of what assets are what. But in my opinion, they can be a little dull on the colors. And one thing you can do to brighten things up a little and adjust these and customize them is again going to After Effects Preferences. And now we're gonna to go to Labels and you can actually customize all of these. So one thing I like to do, even if we're sticking with the default, is just really brighten up the colors because they'll stick out a lot more to me. So just push all of these a bit and you can even add totally different ones. Maybe I don't like this brown in there, but I want kind of a different orange. I could have orange and dark orange. And you could come up with something to totally replace the old ones. As an example, I always wanted there to be a bright white label that I could use for things like null. So we could just replace this dark green that I never use. And now if we go to OK, watch the difference of our layer stack. It's so much brighter. We can kind of pick things out and you can really make it easier to work with After Effects and notice what layers are what. We take a look back and forth and get out of the dull world of some of the default colors. And if we jump back into our labels preferences, now that we have those brighter colors, one extra benefit you get is if we jump into appearance, by default, it's gonna use these label colors as mass and cycle through the mask. So that can help with mass too. If we had something like this text layer and we wanted to add a mask on it and start to draw, you can see it's gonna use those brighter colors and cycle through them. So you get that extra benefit that you'll get some brighter mass that show up a little better too. All right, number three, stacked panels. So especially if you're working on a laptop, since there's so many panels in After Effects, it can be a, a process to kind of hide and unhide what you're doing and kind of scale things up back and forth and really have to just reorganize things or not have things showing. Well, one thing you can do it now with an After Effects update to CC 2015, now to really change how these work, if you don't want to have to be scaling and scaling, there's some new workspace settings that deal with the panels differently. If we go to a small screen up here, it's going to reorganize things. And now if we have any panels open, let's say that we had a big one open, we can just click it and it'll quickly close it and we could open another one. So you don't have to kind of shift everything around. You can quickly just take a look at what you're working with. And if you want to adjust any of those settings and have it a little more custom, you can click this and go to panel group settings and change it from a stacked panel back to the regular one, and then you would get our typical one. Number four, dashed grid lines. So grids can be really useful to work with. We press Command R and say we just need to center this, but maybe you don't like the default colors, or maybe it just interferes with what you're doing a bit. If we go right back into After Effects, Preferences, Grids and Guides, same as the labels, you can customize our guide. So maybe you don't want that purple, maybe you want something that doesn't stand out so much. And you can also change it from line to dash lines. And that's what I like to do because then you can kind of see through it and it still works, but you can see a little bit more of what you're doing. Number five, brighter blue UI. So one thing that they've been tweaking lately is going away from the yellow text for all the minor elements to this blue text and brightening that up. And guess what? Right back into After Effects preferences, if we go to appearance, 
you can always adjust the brightness of this. So if you don't like the dark UI for some reason, you can go a little brighter. But this highlight blue, you can actually now customize it even more, which if you just pull both of these and get it brighter, it's a little detail, but if we go to OK, you can see it affects all the buttons and it shows up a lot when you're doing things like dragging panels around. Or if you have something open in the layer panel, you can see just that little highlight really helps a bit. So there's some fun things you can do customizing After Effects. It really helps me with my workflow to kind of brighten things up and customize my workspace as I need to. And if you want to learn more about some of the recent updates to After Effects, as well as updates to Cinema 40 and other programs, be sure to check out some of my other tutorials by clicking any of those thumbnails where I'll dive a little deeper into some of the different updates, ways you can work better and smarter in After Effects, as well as new features in After Effects and new features in Cinema 4D and other 3D programs like Element 3D. And if you wanna get more tutorials, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella. And you can hit me up on Twitter if you have questions. I'm at Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash Sean Frangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also, be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching, and I will see you at the next video.